You're watching Forget Being Cool. Here's looking at you, kid. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, D- D- Dave. D- Dave. D- D- Dave. Hi, Dave. Dave. <laughs> you just say hi to yourself. No, I said hi, Dave. That's cool. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, we watched another impactful film. Mm-hmm. We did watch another impactful film. This is a very famous film. It's a very famous film, but when I talk to anybody about it, everybody knows the movie, but nobody has seen it. <laughs> I actually, did you experience that? I have experienced that as well. I, I, look, people people who care a lot about stuff like this have seen it. Like People like my dad have seen it flipping in cable, and he's like, yeah, I've watched Casablanca. They're like, did you watch it like in its entirety? And you're like, I'm still not really sure whether or not. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah. Oh, God, there's so many things about this movie. There's moments yes. I liked, and there was a point where I was like, man, this is getting really good. And then it went back to being about politics, and I just couldn't care less. I mean, it was a movie from the 40, from 1942, Casablanca, and it was about the war. I get that. It's a romance story about the war. You know, you know, you know what the problem with that movie is? Any movie coming out in the late 30s and f- early 40s. They're still stage acting? No. Oh, that too. But also just the every single movie and every single thing is a propaganda f- piece focused on the war. There is not that whole the whole world, not the whole world. A lot of the 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 major world powers were at war with each other, and anything you could get from the forties had a tinge of patriotism about it. Yes, it did. Let me say the things I liked first, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I love the music. Yes. By far, like I absolutely loved it. Like that, it it it, it is a genre, It is an era and a genre that, no matter to this day, it just speaks to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Completely engrossed in the music every time the Sam played the piano. Um, I loved how forward thinking their relationship was for the time period. Yes. In the sense that she left him, right? Which is is a very women power move for the time, right? Actually, that's a good point. And it it actually showed And it was about an affair. Right. Right, which is really different for the time period. Yeah. Um, so that I'm going to give it credit for, and I enjoyed that bit of the story. Every time we went back to political agenda about getting out of Casablanca, right? Yeah. I'm just like, Jesus, just do something. You know, like, somebody flip a table or... <laughs> There's some... a fight. There's a punch. There's a slap and a punch. Right. It just... I don't know. Give me but more. it's not a, it's not an action movie. I, I realize that. Or give me more of the emotional beats of the, you know, him coming in the room. Like one of my one of my favorite scenes. Right. Yeah. Is is she comes in and tells Sam to play that song. Right. You play it. Sam, mm-hmm. And he starts playing it. And God dang it. What's his stupid name? Rick. Rich. 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 Rick. Rick. Miss you. Miss your Rick. Right, you go. He comes out full blown. Rick Blaine. Sam, I told you not to play that song, right? And like ever the, again, ever again, and the emotional weight that like is seen between the two characters and how she knew that playing that song would affect him. That scene is beautiful. Yeah, by far, arguably, arguably, in my opinion, more impactful than the famous "Get on the Airplane" scene. That's been parodied in everything that we've ever seen, Jeff. It's it's one of the <laughs> films where a bunch of movie tropes were started. Right. But 
you nobody's seen the, that. That's what I can instantly say. Oh, I watch. I, have you ever watched Casablanca? No. <laughs> you know what Casablanca? Everybody knew Casablanca. Everybody knew stuff in the movie. Right. And nobody's watched the movie. Yep. It's insane. <laughs> and yet, none of the things in this movie are very much like the parodies that we've seen. Right? Like, the parodies are... It's almost as if this is the way you'd remember this movie if you hadn't watched it last week. Yeah. Right? Like, if you hadn't watched it 20 minutes ago, right, you you would remember that scene very much like every other cartoon or TV show you and I've watched growing up that mm-hmm. did a, a version of that scene. You know, this this movie I've never watched. I didn't know what to expect. I, I kind of enjoyed it. I, it's I, it's a movie that is, like, looking at it, it's a movie that is 77 years old. Oh. 77 years old. Everybody in that movie is probably dead by now. I was going to say, is that where the, we get to the grim feeling that you start to realize that everybody that you watched on that screen is dead? Oh. Um, but but that's not the grim feeling. The, way, the reason I looked at it, I was like, man, this movie is 77 years old, but they're actually telling a really good romance that doesn't seem dated. No, it doesn't. It does not seem dated. Which that like parts of the acting make it yeah. look dated. Part of the cinematography makes it look dated. The acting well, mostly the acting of us acting like we're on a stage. Yes, it was stage acting. Definitely. That's that's what makes it feel old. The rest of it, the the plot itself feels very forward thinking. Yes, yeah. it's about the war, and yes, there's the hints of patriotism in there, right? Yeah, but I mean does, that that's it, there's this weird thing that these older classic movies do, Jeff, where they yes, there's like this falsified like men and women relationship thing going on, right? And there's you know, mm-hmm. listen here, see, you know, like this kind of fake like manpower kind of roles the the i don't know i don't know how to describe this it's it's this it's like there were never people who acted this way right like there was this level of professionalism right but they always tried to make the world 77 years ago right in film look the way they wanted the world to look not mm-hmm. necessarily the way that the world did look and I, I don't think a lot of movies to this day still do that, right? We're we're engraced in completely superhero films, right? Every and other... uh, way out there movies, right? Animated and super powered and and special and like I don't know. We're not we're not we, we've but we've crossed this line where the standard tropes of what people believe this this you know one car family kind of stereotypical stay-at-home woman, right? These ideals that, that not look, parts of them were true, right? There's truth in all stereotypes. Now, now this movie though is at the height of World War II, okay. where because the men were at war, ev- almost every woman in the United States was actually working. Right. So it's actually it's a movie sh- that shows I mean, she she left him originally. That shows that woman can be powerful too. Do you think a lot of these movies at this time? And I know we haven't watched a ton of movies from the forties, right? This is the first movie I've watched from the forties. <laughs> I, I, I it is not thanks to our wonderful friend Floyd McDevitt, who I've mentioned multiple times on this show. Floyd McDevitt, shout out to Floyd, uh, who made me watch several movies. And the point of showing us these movies from the forties is that. These these stereotypes were portrayed in the movies, whether they were true or not, because this is the way that we wanted to portray the world. I take it back. I've watched Pinocchio. <laughs> all right. Um, but this is entirely different than all that. Yeah. But like, there were a series like some out of the forties is the golden age of Hollywood, right? Yeah. That's when Citizen Kane came out. On our Casablanca, the Maltese Falcon, which wasn't popular at the beginning, but it has a cult following now. And they, they, it's like the golden age. 
of a lot of movies. So, um, I'll Casablanca, admit- I will say, told one of the the best romance stories I've ever seen. One of the most true romance stories I've ever seen. I'll give it. That. Yes, it's 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 a true rom. It's like a romance story where it, the romance has already happened, and you have to piece together what happened. Right. To where there's this controversy between them. That, and it tells it bit by bit. That element of the story I loved. Right? Yeah. Anytime we were doing the actual romance part of this story, I was invested in the plot. Mm-hmm. When we strayed from that, I, I just kind of was like, yeah, here we go. Let's do more of this. This weird trying to get out of this country papers thing that I don't quite a hundred percent understand because I didn't read the history on this. Do you, do, do you ever think about this? The, the AFI American film Institute did a hundred years and a hundred movie quotes for the hundred most known quotes in, in film and Casablanca had, had the most with six different quotes. Which is looking at you kid. Yeah, it's one the most popular, and you're like, oh, I've heard that before. Of course, I've heard that before. Right. Play Lewis, it. yeah, play, play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. Okay. Lewis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. That's where that started. Yeah. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's already impactful, right there. That's that's a right. quote that's used everywhere. And it, and it still holds up to this day. It is a it's a and it's a usable quote, right? Like, yeah. like, play it, Sam is iconic and rememberable, but it's not isn't like, it doesn't impact the lives of many people. Yeah. Like, you can say this is the start of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, round up the usual suspects. We'll I always s- have. I, I heard that in there, and part of me said, Did that start here, or is that them referencing something that happened before this? I think that started there. Okay. I believe it, if this list says so. We'll always have Paris. Yeah, sure. And, and, and here's my favorite one. I mean, this is a cool one. Of all the gin joints in all towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Yep. I like that <laughs> quote a lot. I like that moment a lot, too. Yeah. And it, it, just this romance, the way they tell it, it's, it's it's unique to where you don't see how the romance started and unfolded. It's how you see what the romance is like after all the events of the romance occurred. Yeah. And it turns it turns into and it's during one of the most the biggest I mean parts in the war, in the world war. Yeah. I think Lewis is one of the like he it it definitely the way they said it in Casablanca. They can show that everybody ha- is playing like a double agent. Nobody is playing their cards straight. Lewis, the inspector, is flip flopping left and right to get his way, to get an advantage. Yeah. I like this movie. I don't love this movie. I don't know if I ever want to watch it again. Jeff, that's, that was the question that I kind of said. You know, I bought it, as I do. Yeah. Do I ever want to watch this again? I, I don't know. Probably not. It's 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 a movie you need to see, but yeah, no, and this is one of those ones on this poster where like we watch Moonlight, right? Yeah, they, you don't need to see that movie. You don't need to see that movie. It's not a lot of these movies on this poster. I even some of the ones that I like and have already seen. I'm like, yeah, no, everybody needs to watch that movie. This is also one of those movies. Do I love it as much? American History X is one of the episodes I edited today. Yeah, right, and. We talked about this, and I I thought that movie was great. Yes. The same way that I think this movie is very, very good. Yes. I don't want to watch it again, but I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's not it's, a movie I'd watch over and over and over again. Although I wouldn't. There although, is a, although if you took me into a room, Jeff, and said, do you want to watch American History X or Casablanca again? I'm going to pick Casablanca. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> So. That Casablanca actually like it was an hour and forty minutes. So so one more thing is this movie was actually it got colorized in the eighties. I was wondering this because I swear to God I had seen this in at least sepia tone. And and it got 
it was really controversial that it got colorized because people are saying one of the the read like it was filmed in black and white so the main setting and everything is set for a black and white overtone right colorizing it's, it's only it makes in like, it look completely different it's basically takes place in like one building also basically the, the, they're saying a lot of people said Casablanca is a handful of films that doesn't have to be colorized to make it more impactful or make a difference in the storytelling at all. No, it was just them freaking out about doing colorizing. That's yeah. it. And it had nothing to... Uh, God, people getting angry about that. silly. Yeah. So, so the crazy thing... Like, so you also see the stage acting and stuff way different from movies nowadays. Nowadays, you get like the whole encompassing like film that's completely different from stage. But this one, you see like they're driving the car, and there's basically the background that's moving, and the car isn't. Yeah, you're, like you can definitely tell that they're they're saying it's staying still, but it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter because this is something I I said this to Candace Jeff. She said, "Oh, it's in black and white. I don't want to watch it." And and what I say is, listen, and I'll say this to anybody. Yeah. What's important in this is not what it looks like. It's the the story that they tell. And I, sometimes you have to find the right story to get over that hump, right? It, I saw I, School of Rock is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's not on this poster and we, <laughs> we'll watch it at some point. Jack Black, School of Rock, greatest movie ever. <laughs> Listen. It's definitely, Hold on. It's definitely. Jack Black's greatest. I have movie. I have a point here to tell though, right? Yeah. That is a brilliantly done story. It is an absolutely brilliant story and no one should deny it. They are touring the stage play right now in mm-hmm. Cleveland. Okay? And yeah. I got to go see it. It is not the same story, but it is. It is it is the same story, but it is told as a stage play. And they do not execute that beautiful story that way. Yet there are plenty of stage plays that I loved. Yeah. Every story has to be told in the right way. And it doesn't matter whether it's an old black and white movie, a, a, a stage play, a, a theater in the park, right? Uh, an experimental street performance, right? If you tell an impactful story of a vlog, for God's sakes, are basically stories, right? If you tell a compelling story, it will hold up for the test of time. And Casablanca is a good story. It is yeah. it is it is a little rough to watch, and I don't think it might persuade people over that line, and there are movies that I think might, but everybody's a little bit different, right? Mm-hmm. I think Casablanca is one of those movies worth giving a shot to despite the fact that it doesn't immediately appeal to you because it is old. How crazy do you think it is that it's the, a part of the movie age where the credits were in the beginning of the movie? <laughs> it's not that weird. You know, oh, you know this, just... this is in a bundle of uh, classic movies on iTunes, which is really hard to not buy, but it's $50, but it comes with like 10 movies. And yeah. like Wizard of Oz is in there, and uh, a couple of these movies where those credits are in the beginning. I was like... I, I... I love this pack of movies. Uh, Gone with the Wind was in there, right? Mm-hmm. Great movies, but I can't buy the bundle. No, I think this movie basically set the golden standard for how a romance movie should be. This this is the this is the mo- the type of romance movie that like this is the gold standard. It's considered the greatest romance movie ever. Every other movie oh. when they make it, it's it's. I and I hate the I hate the guy in the notebook, right? We talked about this a couple weeks ago. I disagree with this being the golden standard for all romance movies to defend all romance movies of all time. I think there are better ones, and I would argue that the notebook is a better romance than this. You would say that that's coming from someone who doesn't love the notebook. But but here. The Notebook came out way after Casablanca. Right. Casablanca is basically this, the framework that The Notebook did. Yeah, I, uh, I feel like they're very different. The Notebook, 
was about two people in the future and you're trying to piece together why they're significant to each other in the past. It, right. Not the same story. And therefore, despite The Notebook being one of the most impactful romance movies of all time, this is a weird tangent for this show to go down, right? I don't, I don't necessarily think that Casablanca is the framework for that movie. It's, it's the most influential movie, romance movie of all time. Okay, I'll give you that. All right, uh, it's the room. I don't know if it set the framework. That that was the part I had yeah, sticking point with. I think I mean the the framework of, has evolved okay, over let me, time. Let me and say framework. I'd say it didn't set the framework. It set basically what every romance movie afterward wants to aspire to be known as. Yet the that the the frame and the workaround of telling this this genre this romance genre has changed over time. You would yes. agree, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with that. Jeff, this has been the film impact. Casablanca is very impactful. We've talked about this. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys want to watch these movies along with us, our 100, 100, 100 plus bucket list movies to watch, you guys can see the next three movies over on the Film Impact page over ForgetBeingCool.com. Just go over there. Click the, the Film Impact button. You'll see all the movies, the movies we've done, the movies that are upcoming. If you guys want to hear about our conversation on Moonlight, you just click the Moonlight poster. It's really easy. Or if you guys want to hear us talk about The Notebook, you click on The Notebook. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Moore. That's Jeff Daly. We'll see you guys next week for another impactful film. I'm Jeff Daly. That's Dave Moore. For more great discussions, hit that subscribe button or visit forgetbeingcool.com.